God says, let me go help now. Have any of y'all been put under for surgery? Oh, yeah. Anesthesia? Yes, sir. No, I have. That's some good stuff. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make you pay the fee out all day. <laughs> Boy, I feel my ass. So that's not what time my wife looked at me. She said, boy, you ain't got a can or a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first surgery that was ever performed was in Adam. God put him to sleep. Yeah. It did something he couldn't do for himself. How many of y'all know that there are some things God has to do for you that you can't do for yourself? Raise your hand. Everybody better have a hand up. Amen. <laughs> There are some things you can't do for yourself. You gotta go to God for it. And Adam didn't even know that. He was just frustrated. And God put him to sleep. And then he performed surgery and took out of him a body part and pulled it out. Now, for some of us, we hear it's a rib, you know, whatever. It comes outside. You you take it whatever you want. That ain't what I saw. Y'all know what I saw? What I saw was that the very thing you need to be successful in your life, the very thing that need to, you need to complete your life, the very thing that makes life worth having is in you already. Stop looking to the White House and the State House and even the church. God bless her. Stop looking for things outside of yourself trying to make it when all you have to do is slow down, peace be still. Get into your own little cubby hole, you know, where you can hear a, you know, God ain't in all the storms that you think. That's where he keeps peace. He ain't in the thunder and the earthquakes and all that stuff. He's in the Can y'all hear a whisper and all of that noise and stuff going on? You can't hear a whisper. You gotta get somewhere where it's quiet. Get away from other people. Get away from the hustle of life. And get into a quiet place. And listen to somebody say, hey, over here. And once you hear that whisper, you're gonna know who's whispering, because God said, my sheep know my voice. You're going to know who it is. Somebody be saying, God be telling me, stop lying. <laughs> God told me, stop lying. God says, when we are tempted, we are tempted with, by our own lust. God said he does not tempt man with that stuff. Because he's not tempted, neither he tempts no man. So if you're tempted to do wrong or do evil, stop lying on God. <laughs> That's your lust talking to you. The spirit says, <laughs> So in that garden, God pulled out what? He needed that was already there, but he pulled it out. And now what he said is, him gave it back to him and said, now, love that like yourself. See, one thing we got to understand is God created diversity, but he meant for us to become one body. We're all members of one body with different abilities and talents. But we have to work together in order for it to all work together. The church is supposed to be that way. I, it amazes me how many temples and all this stuff in the world and right next door are hell breaking loose. I hear pastors talk to me all the time. Why we can't get the black churches to work together? Because we are warring from within. That's it. But I read in book, the book of Acts, chapter 2 and chapter 4, the Bible said that when everybody was moved by the Holy Spirit, even those who had plenty, they sold their goods, gathered up their results,
placed them at the apostles' feet, and the Bible said that no one lacked anything. What was that telling us? That through relationships, nothing is impossible. No one should lack anything. Because in unity, we have power. Y'all with me? I ain't lost nobody, you have So here's the thing. So when God gave him his wife, marriage is spiritual, not natural. How many of you guys agree with that? I ain't got too many agreements. But I can stand on that. I've been married 21 years. See, sometimes you got to be experiencing something to be able to speak on it. I'm going to tell you, me and my wife don't see eye eye on a lot of things. <laughs> and sometimes I'm going to do like Adam. Blame her for everything that's going wrong. But when you keep reading on, God come right back to you and say, Now, after I done dealt with everything else you blame, this is for you. I've learned to be a man by standing on my own decisions. And stop blaming other people and making excuses. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I reasoned as a child. I did childish things. But when I became a man, I put childish things away. That's called maturity, people. That comes from relationships. So here's my point. When he gave them his wife, they were supposed to be one. And they were supposed to do things together. And that's when God said, I can rest. God's purpose for man was not for cars and houses and money and things and all the stuff that makes us go away from him. God's whole purpose for creating you was for a relationship. First with him, then with your fellow man. If you have healthy relationships with him and other people, you have had success in your life. Yeah. It is only after you have done your work on this, on this earth that we are all doomed to die someday because of one man's decision. Wait a minute, what did I say? Wait a minute, not a man and a woman's decision? What? You mean Eve got off scot free? No, she ain't got off scot free. She got her punishment. But what happened is when he went up the chain of command, he issued punishment. Curse is the serpent and everything that came after him. Cursed him, but punished her. How many of you ladies understand what it's like to have menstrual cycles and pain and <laughs> And, and being in child labor. Come on, how about that? Well, doggone it, that was your punishment. Wait a minute, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. That wasn't your only punishment. You know what your ultimate punishment was? I mean, this is the ultimate punishment for women. We were created as free beings, free will. But your ultimate punishment was, and you shall be subject to your husband. Your ultimate punishment was that he will rule over you. Check your word. <laughs> yeah, I knew I'd get some amen from the men now. Yeah. I walk in the house, I want some submission. I want somebody to obey me. I want my dinner. I want, oh, you're getting in trouble now. I'm going to give it the rest of Don't you worry about that. That's just a setup. That's just a setup. So while the men feeling good, because that happened with Adam too, because I'm sure Adam was like, <laughs> you the one caused this mess. You gave me that thing to eat. But then God kept moving. And he came to his leader. He came to the head of the house. He came to the man that's supposed to be Charles in charge, beating on his chest, who came home from work and said, where's my dinner? <laughs> he came to that guy. He came to that guy and he said, I'll pay the bills around here, and you're supposed to do what I say. He's the one that comes up to the kids, do as I say, not as I do. I like 
Are y'all with me? Got two minutes? That's all. I got a way to finish it. So what happened was, God came to that man who was baiting around and stomping around and said, because of your decision, not cursed are you, listen to me, gentlemen, everybody on the side of my voice, God never cursed you. Don't let nobody lie to you. He never cursed you. He said, cursed is the ground because of you. And because everything on earth lives off the ground, it's under the curse, we all die. Y'all with me? Okay. Now, still about that relationship. From that point on, he kicked them out of Eden, right? Broken relationship, right? Because sent into the world. God set forth an effort to repair that relationship. And he did it for his son. He died for you to repair the relationship. And all you have to do is believe that God did that. Repent. Repent of your sins. Ask him for forgiveness. Repent means turn away. All you got to do, if what you're doing ain't working, turn in the opposite direction and something will start working. That's repent. Amen. If you've been trying to do it on your own for so long and haven't been including God in it, Stop trying to do it on your own and do it God's way. Watch your life change. Amen. And the last thing I'm going to read, read, uh, leave with you, go into the book of Matthew chapter 25. It talks about the talent. This is the grand finale for this because I don't want to overdo my time. The parable about the talents. God gave one, one, another two, and another five. Is that fair? According to God, it was. Because he said, I'm going to give each and every last one of you what you can handle. He ain't going to give you the same amount, but he's going to give you what you can handle so you have no excuse. Amen? Amen. If you can't have nothing, you can't handle anything, he's going to give you at least one thing to screw up on <laughs> so you won't have no excuse. But after he gives you something, and I'm talking about these relationships, I ain't talking about money, I ain't talking about the stuff, I'm talking about the talent and the relationship. After he give you this, there's going to come a day you're going to say, hey, God, this is what I've done with it. And that is going to be the difference between you going up or down. Because the Bible says, when he look at it and you come to him, he's either going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. You've served me well. Enter into my rest. Amen. Or he will say to you, Away from me, you wicked, evil, evil doer. Amen. And he's going to send you down. It's all going to be based on the most important thing to God that should be important to you, and that is the relationship with him and your fellow man. Amen. If you make your effort every day to put time into establishing a healthy relationship, do something for others, and be appreciative of what others do to you, you will hear from God. Well done. Amen. Well done. Amen. Let us say a prayer.